McAllister's Deli in Carbondale is the official healthy choice option of Saluki Athletics. Let's stay connected through McAllister'sDeli.com backslash catering, the official healthy choice option of Saluki Athletics, McAllister's Deli in Carbondale. We've got a good episode planned for you. The uh, news has traveled far and wide across the Southern Illinois region that Ian Walters and Nick Neville have been signed and will stay locally to play professional baseball after finishing up their senior years for Lance Rhodes and Saluki baseball. So uh, we got a chance to catch up with Nick Neville this week while he was up in Chicago playing for the Southern Illinois Miners as they played the Windy City Thunderbolts. And uh, the shortstop is now playing with Ian Walters on the same side of the infield, just like he did in college. And both are off to pretty good starts. Ian Walters was three for three in his first game. He's leading the team in hitting for for the minors. And uh, Nick, who's our guest, hit his first professional home run on Sunday. So here's Nick Neville, the all-time single-season home runs leader in Saluki history here on the podcast. Enjoy. Nick, I'm sure you've been going through the media frenzy just like Ian back home, but pretty cool that you guys get to do this together, huh? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. And, uh, you know, I I couldn't have asked for a better friend and teammate to be going through this together. Um, I just remember at the end of our 2020 season when we found out the whole year was getting canceled, uh, I just looked at Ian and we started crying. And uh, to think that, you know, we get to still play together today is pretty special, I would say. What did you share with each other when uh, you, you, you did find out you get you got to come back and um, play more baseball after the season ended uh, with your college season a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I mean it was it was a pretty quick turnaround. I mean uh, I was I was going to end up playing with like a collegiate summer ball team up in Mankato, Minnesota, in the Northwoods League, and I was pretty set on doing that. And uh, all of a sudden, Coach Rhodes called me and he's like, "Hey, do you want to play with the minors?" Uh, Ian's probably going to play with them too and I I mean I just lit up I was like I mean I I couldn't imagine a better situation to get to you know start off my pro career playing with Ian so this is uh, your first road trip should have set the scene for people by the way we're sitting in uh, like a party deck type deal up in Crestwood Illinois Uh, you're getting ready to play the the Windy City Thunderbolts Um, I mean what have you thought of uh, this this league so far and what you've got to experience through about a week I mean, it's it's pretty interesting, honestly. Like the the first game I played, we played against uh, Quebec, and their shortstop named uh, Gift and Gope apparently was like a major league shortstop and has like a few years of big league time. And that was like my first impression of the league is, oh my goodness, like this guy was a big leaguer. Like, what's going on? And uh, I mean, so far it's pretty cool. Like there there are a lot of really talented guys here. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're still just trying to get adjusted, trying to, you know, get in the flow of things. Obviously, it's our first road trip. So um, we'll, we'll see as things progress how, how it really turns out. The first pro home run had to get you feeling right last weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, honestly, um, up until then, I hadn't really been feeling uh, – I hadn't really been feeling too comfortable at the plate yet, maybe just pressing a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to do that, especially an opposite field home run, I mean, that, that felt pretty good. And, um, you know, Ian was right there to congratulate me too. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, – that, that was – you drove him in to tie the game uh, on Sunday in the fifth inning. Uh, was was just talking to Ian kind of about the end of the college season and, and the quick turnaround that you were getting at too. How challenging was the end to your tenure as a Saluki in your college career? Yeah, I mean, it, obviously it's like pretty emotional – when uh, you lose on your home field and win 40 games, you don't get into a regional, thinking maybe, you know, that, that could have been my last baseball game I ever played to a few days later playing in a professional baseball game. Um, it, it was definitely it was definitely not the way I drew it up, but, I mean, it, it, was, uh, it was definitely something I'll remember forever, you know, being able to run out on the field and look it in and, and know that we're in this together. You said you would have been seeking out opportunities to play after, um, no matter what, whether it was up in Mankato or, or professionally somewhere. But but what did your gut tell you? Did your gut tell you that maybe it was over after that last game against Indiana State? I don't know. I mean, you could guess at, you know, the year I had and did I do enough to get a chance and blah, blah, blah. But 
I mean, nobody really ever knows, especially with the draft only being 20 rounds this year. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I tried to treat it as, like, that could have been my last game, and that's how I tried to look at it because I didn't want to take it for granted and look back and be like, wow, I thought I was going to play professionally after my last college game, and I never got a chance to, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it hit pretty hard at the time. I was, I, I just kept telling myself, like, this might have been the last time you ever played. Like, you need to set this all in. We've talked before about how analytic, how analytical you are, especially when it comes to hitting. Um, but I don't know how analytical you were when it came to thinking about pro ball, but how much time did you think about it while you were in college? Um, I mean, obviously, it crossed my mind, like, oh, I want to play pro ball. But at the same time, I know that if I spent too much time thinking about it, it was just going to distract me. So um, it, it wasn't necessarily something where I was, like, you know, stressing over my draft stock and, you know, am I hearing from this scout or that scout? You know, it was, it was kind of just like I wanted to have the best year I possibly could, win as many, win as many games as possible. And, you know, as long as I did my best, I'd be able to look back and be satisfied, whether it was being a professional or not. When it was over, uh, how much interest did you think there would be? Um, you know, I certainly didn't think I'd sign with a Southern Illinois Miners three days after my college career ended, but um, I had I had been hopeful that I was going to get an opportunity, and I'm, I'm glad I, I got this opportunity to play already. What do you think the... I know you're you're caught up in the here and now and trying to do the best you can for the minors, but you know the goal at this level for everybody is to get signed by a major league franchise. What do you think that future potentially looks like for you? I mean, I honestly have no clue. Um, you know, from talking to my coaches and stuff, they seem to think I have a chance. Uh, you know, they're they're telling me that you know scouts are following me and they're they're talking to scouts about me, but. You know, at the same time, like I said earlier, like nobody really has a clue. It's especially this year, the, the draft only being 20 rounds, minor league teams cutting down. You know, it, um, it's it's definitely a situation that nobody's really seen before. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm just trying to play the, the rest of this year out and, uh, you know, do as well as I can here, have as much fun as I can and enjoy the experience. And whatever happens, happens, honestly. I got to think the 17 home runs in college would speak loud. The the single season record at SIU, that's that's got to carry some weight with some people, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you would hope so, but you know, I'm not a scout. I'm just I'm just a baseball player, you know. So, I mean, you would hope you would hope that that would carry some weight, but at the same time, you know, you you never really know what an organization is looking for or, you know, what a scout might think about me or whatever the situation may be. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, if I'm a scout, I'm going to draft me. But obviously, I'm biased because I'm me. You know, I, I want I want me to be successful. So, you know, I don't I don't know what scouts are thinking. I don't know what they're saying. And uh, quite frankly, like that's just so beyond my control. I I just don't think it's something that I really need to give too much thought into because the more I think, oh, do scouts like me? Did I do enough in college? Like, then I'm just going to start second guessing everything, doubting myself, and then I'm probably going to play poorly. So we got to uh, get rid of the, the player coach label, go to player scout label for you. <laughs> player scout, I guess. I didn't know I was player coach. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just saying in general. You know, that's that's the thing you hear sometimes in indie ball, especially yeah, as you, yeah. you see some some player coaches. But uh, yeah, you could be – At least, yeah, Craig Massey, he's a player coach. Okay. There you go. We'll, we'll get you the player scout lo- label if we can. <laughs> uh, speaking to the, the record, though, of – single season home runs uh do you have the ball from number 17 yeah i'm pretty sure i gave it to my mom and if i didn't sorry mom but (laughs) (laughs) i'm pretty sure i gave it to her and if i didn't i have it at home honestly oh no can i say that yeah (laughs) i mean i might have i might i might have given it to her but i don't remember and if i didn't give it to her i have it so i don't know i had an extra ball sitting in my locker but i can't remember if that was the one that i gave to her or not honestly (laughs) that sounds so bad (laughs) no that's that's not bad i'm sure an auctioneer might like to get their hands on it but um which of those 17 home runs to you was most memorable oh i don't know honestly i mean i'd say maybe the one i hit against murray state just because I felt like we were struggling so hard at that time. And um, 
I don't know. I, I was feeling pretty down on not only myself, but like just the whole team, like the whole vibe. Everyone was feeling like we were just struggling and, you know, we didn't we didn't know what was going on. And I think I was like already 0 for 3 that game I, with like a couple hard hit balls. And I was frustrated, like, why can't I get hits? And I go down 0-2 and hit a homer after Ian hits a backside home run. JT hits a blue triple. And then all of a sudden I hit a home run. Like, I, I don't know. It was just like, just like that flip, flip the switch. Like we're winning a game that I thought we probably should have lost. Honestly, I thought they outplayed us and, you know, we made the plays when it, when it mattered the most. So, you know, I look back at that one. I'm like, you know, that was, that was pretty cool. I don't think I'd ever felt like that uh, running around the bases. Just uh, the, the meaning that it had for our team more so than just like how far it went or, you know, the record or anything like that. To me, that's probably the most special. I remember you telling me at the time that that might have been the biggest home run you hit in your life. You stand by that? Yeah, I mean, probably, honestly, just because, I mean, like I said, it was just like, like if you were in the locker room and you knew how we felt and you knew how our practices were, like, you know, we were sulking. We were like sad puppies for a couple of weeks. You know, we couldn't buy a win. And it felt like every time we hit a ball hard, it was getting caught. Every time our pitcher made a good pitch, they were dinking it in for a blue pit. Like it, I don't know. It just felt like uh, maybe things were starting to turn around for us. And I, I think we probably lost that series that next weekend. But, you know, that doesn't matter because we ended up performing well after that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, at the time, at the time, it, it felt it felt huge. You know, I could I could point towards, uh, you know, maybe hitting a home run on uh, in game one of the conference tournament. Like that was pretty cool. But at the same time, I don't know. I, I just like having Coach Rhodes give me a hug after the game and just being like, thank you so much for hitting that. Like I, just to know that like uh, that that swing had that much of an impact on not only the whole program, but him specifically, the one who gave me a chance after, you know, quite frankly, being a terrible player my junior year and then coming out and he gives me a chance and now I'm playing professional baseball and like I, I have to credit that to him. So for him to for him to look at me and say that really meant a lot. Yeah, yeah, you can you could feel that trickle down with the players, but I didn't I didn't know it went as deep as, as that. Um, the you mentioned the home run against Bradley to open up the conference tournament. What a cool atmosphere that was with the hill packed. Yeah. It was the opening night of the tournament and you know maybe feeling down a little bit you guys had given up a run early and then you hit the home run yeah. and i think a lot of saluki fans look at that picture of you getting back to the dugout uh, where you guys are chest bumping your guys yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how much have you taken a look at that and uh kind of gone back to that moment since here in the last couple of weeks oh i mean that was that was a pretty incredible feeling and like i mean there have only been a handful of times in my life where i went up to the plate and I was like, I'm going to hit a home run right here. And that was definitely one of them. Their shortstop, TJ Manteifel, he's a, he's a freshman, and he's going to be a great player. He's, he's got good tools. But he goes, he goes backside homer. And I'm like, well, if he just did it, then I have to, right? <laughs> I can't let this dude show us up. And they're up 1-0 on our home field. I'm like, no way am I letting this happen. So, I mean, you know, I, I kind of knew what pitch was coming. I knew they were going to try and challenge me in. That's what they did at their place. And, uh, you know, I, I just ambushed the fastball, hit it out. And I, I knew as soon as I hit it. And uh, honestly, the thing that made that the most special was actually my uh, uncle and cousin and my two sisters, my mom, my dad. I mean, they were all there to see it. And, uh you know, to kick off the conference tournament like that. And I, I don't know if you saw it. I blew my mom a kiss when I was walking into the dugout. Yeah. No, I, I didn't see that. I just saw you do the uh, the elbow-to-elbow -elbow thing. Yeah, and nearly, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was Austin Ulick or who you met in the dugout, but you nearly yeah, knocked the guy Adam, over. It was Adam Bunnell, yeah. we. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he told me, he's like, dude, we got to do this after you hit your next homer. And I'm pretty sure it was like the next game. It was like my next at bat, I hit a home run. And we're like, I guess we have to do it now. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty funny, but yeah, I mean that was that was probably one of the one of the coolest moments I've ever had in my sports career. And then the fact that we went on to win that game, like I don't know, a million to zero, and then the fog, and I, oh my gosh, it was just such a weird game, but at the same time, like such a cool experience. I'd never seen, I'd never seen our stadium packed like that, and to see that you know people cared about baseball and wanted to see us and support us and you know knew that we were actually worth anything was i think pretty cool
And you, you mentioned the fog. What are you sitting there thinking in the sixth inning when the game gets delayed because you can't see the outfielders? <laughs> Hurry this game up, dude. I'm trying to go home. I mean, <laughs> it was, it was uh, I, I don't know, like maybe 11 to 1 or something. And they didn't want to be there. It was obvious. And we were we were just thinking, like, dude, come on. Like, we, we literally need, like, three more outs for this game to be over. Like, we just need to, we just need to play them. And uh, I don't know. I was honestly thinking they were going to forfeit because it was probably in their best interest so they wouldn't have to burn more pitching, and I knew they were going to have to get up early and play the next day. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was just kind of sitting there like, I can't wait for this game to be over. Like, this game is in the books already, and then we ended up playing, what, like 11 more pitches, and they're like, all right, this game's over. Well, I could have told you that. Right. So. Right. Well, you go on the, the next couple of days, and you tie and break the single-season record in, in one game against Indiana State with number 16 and 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, how aware were you of – what you were doing while it was going on um i honestly had no clue i had a chance to break a record until after the bradley game jt came up to me in the locker room he's like you're one off the home run record and i'm two off or uh, something like that yeah he was like you're one off and i'm two off i was like what no way like i i had no clue and at that point, I started playing back all the times so I flew out to the track and the wind was blowing in. I'm like, oh, I should have, you know, 27 home runs right now. But obviously that's not true. But, you know, I started thinking about that, like, oh, it would be cool if I broke it, you know. But, I, you know, you hit, you hit a home run, you don't think you're going to hit two the next game. Like, you know, that's not really how baseball works. You hit a homer, like, you might hit one in three games. But, you know, to hit three in, in two games and – especially in my first two at-bats against Indiana State, who, quite frankly, if we win that game, we're probably in a regional. And I think everyone knew that. So um, I think I think for those home runs to happen in that game was pretty insane, honestly. Like, I couldn't have written it up any better, except maybe if we would have won. Like, that would have been pretty cool, too, maybe a walk-off homer. But I don't know. It, was, uh, it wasn't something that, you know, I... I walked into the year thinking, yeah, I'm going to break a home run record or even going into that game, I'm going to break a home run record, you know. I just hit I hit the second one and I walked in. I was like, I guess that's it. <laughs> you know, I guess I have it now. Bud Light has created a seltzer so satisfying, it will have your taste buds going wild. Bud Light Seltzer is the official seltzer of Saluki Athletics. Now back to our conversation. A little non sequitur from the home runs. You mentioned potentially going to a regional. You guys won 40 games. Um, you know, obviously finished on the outside of the tournament field. But when you watch what a team in your conference does here in the last couple of days, going to a super regional, you split with Dallas. Yeah. Uh, you, you split a four game series with them. Uh, what do you think that would have? You know, how how do you think you guys would have stacked up if if you guys had gone? You know, I think it really depends on who we played. Um, I think we could swing it like that was apparent. We could hit. And I think if we would have played in a regional that, um, you know, if if we would have got stacked up with Arkansas, you know, that's a tough regional to win. They're they're a pretty incredible team. But I think, you know, you put us in a regional where um, that team maybe doesn't swing it as well as us. But they have good pitching. Like we we might be able to we might be able to win a regional in that respect. I mean, you look at Dallas Baptist. Um, you know, all credit to them. They have, you know, they probably had the two best pitchers we had seen all year going Friday, Saturday. I guess game one, game two, in Dominic Hamill and Rhett Kuba. So, you know, I can I can totally see how they're going to a super regional, especially with their offense and stuff. You know. But, On the mound, I think we didn't have that, but at the same time, I think we had enough on the mound to where we could compete in a regional for sure. And, you know, it's honestly all about winning a few games. It's not even about, you know, the best team. It's about who plays the best on that day. Yeah, coming soon for the program, hopefully. Um, Loved our conversation a couple weeks ago when when we talked hitting. I think it lasted 20 minutes. I wanted to talk to you for like two hours because <laughs> the, the rumors of you being analytical about hitting were true, that, yeah. they, they, that you love to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, when, when, when did your obsession start with hitting? I don't know. Probably when I was super young. I mean, I, I've always been like big into like 
making sure my swing is right. But like my definition of my swing being right changes all the time. And I think just the more that I've learned, the more I've kind of become interested in it. Like the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know so much. Like when I, oh my goodness. <laughs> Almost got smoked by a foul ball. <laughs> when I first said, like probably like, probably when I was like 18, 19 is when I really started like watching videos of like major league hitters and being like, all right, like what's the secret? Like why are these guys so good? Because you look at somebody like Mookie Betts and you're like, well, it's not because he's crazy big, strong. I mean, he's obviously super fast and strong for his size and really athletic and coordinated and he checks all these boxes, but at the same time, there's got to be something more. You know, like why does... You know, why does then, you know, if it's all about athleticism, why do you not just take every defensive back in the NFL and give him a baseball bat and tell him to go hit? You know, it's, it's got to be something more. And so I start diving into that, and, uh, you know, I, I'm 19, 20, like, oh, I got it figured out. Every good hitter does this. And then I turn 21, 22, and I'm like, well, that's not true. Every good hitter does this. And now I'm 23, about to turn 24, like, well, every good hitter does something different. And that's kind of the way it is. You know, just it's I think it at this point in my journey, I've realized that um, good hitters do things more or less the same, but they all have a different way of doing it. And there's no one way to think about it or teach it or practice. You know, you look at some guys in the major leagues, they like to hit off the machine. And some guys in the major leagues hate the machine. Some guys in the major leagues hit off the tee. Some guys in the major leagues will never hit off the tee. Some guys in the major leagues think they need to chop straight down on the ball. Some guys in the major leagues think they need to swing up. I mean, it's, it's literally such a complex problem that I think that is why I'm so interested in it is because there are so many different reasons for why this guy is good and he thinks this, but this other guy thinks this, but they're both good hitters and do similar things well. So... I, th- I think that's why I'm so interested. Is there's there's so much to it, so much more than the average person realizes. I would say. So, so I'm interested with the natural ebb and flow and failure of hitting that comes sometimes when things do start to go wrong with your knowledge base. Mm-hmm. How tempting is it to totally change everything? I mean, just about every time I go 0 for 6 or something, I'm like, yeah, I got to change. But, I, I mean, obviously I know that's not the truth. Like, Because when I was younger, I would. I would I would go into full panic mode and be like, there's something wrong with my swing. And, you know, sometimes when I go 0 for 6, 0 for 8, 0 for 10, like sometimes it is something mechanical. But a lot of the time it's something mental. And um, for as physical as this game can be, I mean, everyone knows how mental it is in theory until you play. And then you realize, like, oh, my goodness, like, this game is so mental because, like, some days you go out there and you're seeing a 95-mile-an-hour fastball all the way in. You're like, oh, I have so much time. Like, I'm not even worried about the heater. And then you you got somebody throwing 86 and you can't catch up. And when just yesterday I was turning around 95 and now I'm seeing 86 and I can't touch it, like, that's tough because – like, imagine if you're, like, driving your car one day and, like, you're pressing the gas and, like, it, and it's, like, zooming. You're, like, okay, I can accelerate. And the next day you press the gas and it's, like, accelerating at half the speed. And then you press your brakes and they're not as sensitive as they were the day before. And that's kind of what, like, hitting is like. Is you kind of have, like, I mean, you're driving the same car every day, but it's in a different condition every day. So you really, like, have no clue what you got, really, honestly. And that's right. that's the hard part of hitting is like it's like it's so hard to be consistent because everyone has four for four days you know right. but the best have four for four days more often sure sure it, taking your car analogy um maybe you have the same base to your car you have the same body so so what have you been able to categorize as a hitter as hey this is my base this is my body and then these are the things that do need to change when an adjustment's necessary i would say most of the time for me a lot of it has to do with like my timing when I start my load one of my biggest problems that I get into is like I'll start loading too late and I mean when you when you're not on time for the fastball it speeds everything up you start if if you miss the first fastball you miss a couple fastballs or you're late on them then you're like oh I got to cheat to the heater and then 
you swing over breaking ball. So for me, a lot of time it's like, okay, I can keep the base, the basic movements that I do, but I might have to start earlier, or I might have to start slower, or I might have to tone down my leg kick if somebody's quick to the plate. But I think like the basic fundamentals, like my swing path and stuff like that, like those are the things that I need to keep because I've worked hard to to achieve what I have. But um, I think I think during the year I kind of lost a little bit of a feel for my swing and. You know, it, it might seem like, I mean, at least on paper, like I had a pretty good year, but I think, I, and I hit a lot of home runs, obviously, but I think I had a lot more in terms of average. I thought I was capable of a lot more, and I kind of got myself out a lot of the time just like changing my swing over time, not even knowing it. So I think, um, you know, the past few days I've been trying to just get back to uh, watching video of when I was going best and trying to match that and, and thinking back to, okay, what was I feeling? And, and this just goes back to why the game's so hard is over time, you know, my swing's different now than it was six months ago. And it's not like I was trying to change anything. Like, you know, feelings just change. Like one day your hands move here, your hands move there. It feels good. And then the next day you think they're in the same spot, but they're not. And then you think you're loading the same way, but you're not. And, you know, it's hard. It's right. hard. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I want to ask your advice on a little different subject, too. Um, a bit ironic, I think, with all the places that you've been, that you start a new chapter, and you don't have to move. You go from Carbondale to Marion. Um, but for people that don't know your background, Notre Dame to, to San Jacinto to South Carolina to Carbondale and played at a couple of different high schools, too. What's your advice on uh, apartment shopping since you've been all over the place? Apartment shopping? Like what? Like what kind of apartment is like good or like what? Like I mean, what, what's what's your checklist? What are you what are you looking for when you when you're going to a new city? Like you have a bunch. Oh, <laughs> I would say okay. Number one, you need to have a good kitchen because I like to cook, and if you don't have a good kitchen, I mean it's just not going to work. I don't want to eat out all the time. I want to make my own food. Number two, you got to have good Wi-Fi. Aspen Court, sorry, the Wi-Fi is out all the time. I'm calling you out. <laughs> Wi-Fi is out all the time, and they're always like, "Sorry guys, Wi-Fi is out." I'm like, well, that's the tenth time this past month. Anyway, Wi-Fi got to be good. What else? Living room space. I mean, to me, that's not super important. I think you got to have you got to be able to have your own space though. Like have your own room because I uh, my freshman year I roomed with somebody and I mean it's cool like he's a great guy and I'm still friends with him to this day but I'm sure he'll tell you that he wishes he had his own room too you know so I'd say those are probably the three things you got to have a nice kitchen so you can cook you got to have good wi-fi that doesn't go out all the time and you got to have your own space somewhere where you can just go and chill and like get away from the world a little bit and like have a little bit of alone time because that's what i need nick neville coming to house hunter soon um <laughs> that's, that was pretty good that was pretty good I'd, I'd i'd watch the show if you're on it <laughs> no that was that was pretty quick on your feet too um just just to bring your your whole journey full circle from the various stops you had in high school to the various stops you had in college concluding in southern illinois what do you know now that you you didn't know uh, at some of those other stops I mean, it's so ironic because my dad's been telling me this since I was 10 years old, but, you know, obviously everything your parents tell you isn't true and you know better because, you know, you're, you're a kid. And especially, like, I think when I was younger, like, I knew I was smart, but I guess I thought I was smarter than I was. So I kind of felt like I had it all figured out when I was really young. And he would always tell me, that it doesn't matter what the situation is. There's no such thing as a perfect situation. The perfect situation is going to be because you created that. It's all about what you do with what you're given. And I spent so much time when I was younger focusing on, you know, oh, like the sun's too bright here, the grass is too green, you know, like just just little stuff that didn't matter. And in reality, like, you know, if you go out with a positive attitude and you look to see the good in everything, then you're probably going to have a good time and you're probably going to make the most and have success wherever you're at. But on the flip side, on the flip side, it can be the exact same way. You know, you can be in a perfect environment, quote unquote, but I mean, you could find flaws in everything. It's all about appreciating what you have and making the most of your situation. And I think if I had actually done that from the time I was, you know, 14, 15, I wouldn't have gone to three high schools 
four colleges and, you know, be sitting here talking to you right now. So I guess I'm grateful for it. It took me a while to learn my lesson, but that's probably the biggest thing I, I wish I knew when I was younger. Yeah, that's a, no, that's a terrific answer. And uh, hopefully there's a couple more moves to come and you can put some of your own vice to, te- uh, to test and uh, we can watch you play baseball for years to come. Yeah, I mean, that's the plan, right? <laughs> Keep playing until they tell you not to, I guess. They haven't told me not to. I can't believe I'm still playing. So. That's uh, future player scout Nick Neville. How about that? How's that sound? <laughs> Hopefully just player. Hopefully I don't got to fall back on the scout. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, thanks so much for the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. I had fun. That's Nick Neville here on the Saluki Standards Podcast. Now with the Southern Illinois Miners and the uh, the home run king. Single season record for home runs at SIU at the